Good morning, my grandchildren and my friends from afar. Here we sit again, looking at another chapter in the wonderful book of Jeremiah. I think this is going to be an interesting, rather long study, but uh, very interesting. Dear Lord, watch over us, Father. Please help us as we read through these scriptures, Father. Direct our hearts and our minds and our souls. Help us receive that which you would have us receive. We love you, Father, and we need you, Father, we believe. Amen. 51 reads, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will rise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them. Not only Babylon, but people that live in this carnal world, that may be given into the carnal ways, that rise up against me. This is easy to do these days. We can rise up against the Lord don't even know it. A destroying wind. And will send to Babylon fanners. That shall fan her. And shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble. They shall be against her round about. Looks like a pretty bad day for Babylon. And the carnal way of thinking. Amen. Against him that bendeth. Let the archer bend his bow. And against him that lifteth up uh, in his uh, brigad uh, brigadine. I'm not sure what that word means. Uh, Bullinger says up here. Let me see if I can find it. Right there. That uh, it means coast of mail. I'm still not sure what that means. And spare ye not her young men. Destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. Uh, Matthew makes an interesting note there, saying that Chaldeans have been used as uh, the uh, correcting force of God many times. But here uh, we find uh, these same people uh, being uh, guilty of this judgment themselves. Uh, for Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Uh, God has not turned his back on any of us. God still loves us through our sin and through our wrongdoings. He is still willing to reach out, and that's what he did with that cross that day. Praise God. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. This is what we should be doing today, people, just as fast as we can. We should flee out of the midst of Babylon. And this is not to have anything to do where you live. It doesn't have anything to do with a town or a city. This is a way of thinking. We should flee out of the midst of Babylon and get out of that carnal way of thinking and start thinking in the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And deliver every man his soul. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is where your soul is born. This is where you start receiving that spirit of Jesus Christ. When we sell out 100% completely and wholly to the spirit of Jesus Christ and we leave our sin at the door, that's to say ourself, when we leave our old uh, carnal way of thinking at the door so we can enter, amen. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. This is, a, he's talking about Babylon here, this old carnal way of thinking. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. The Lord used uh, carnality, this flesh condition we find ourselves in, this human condition. Uh, he's used this as a, uh, as a uh, whipping rod, a punishing post, uh, to get us around to the, white, the right way of thinking. The Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. Uh, the nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. And I made a note here. Uh, think of the Jesus Christ in that uh, garden that night, and uh, before he was the night before he was put on that cross, and he said, "Lord, let this cup pass before me, but let it be Your will." Maybe really started thinking about that cup. Uh, this cup is a means to an end. 
Our carnalism is a means to an end. We read this Bible first in our carnal state of mind, which is with our brain. And we, we, we tend to think this book is supposed to mean what our brain tells us it does. But no, sir, this book is supposed to mean what our heart tells us it does. Amen. God says he wants his word written on our heart, and so it will be. Uh, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for her pain, and so be she may be healed. Uh, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Once you, uh, kind of like that old Z.T. Moore I'm always talking about, once you go Z.T. Moore, you ain't going back to that old-timey four-wheel uh, ride lawnmower. And once you've found something better, you're not, there's no re need to go back to uh, something slower. And the Spirit of Jesus Christ, that receiving that revelation of Jesus Christ, is far more better than uh, the, uh, the uh, flesh understanding of what this book, this Holy Bible, means to us. Uh, so uh, she can't be healed of that. She can't go back because uh, when, uh, Bob when Babylon wakes up to the spirit of Jesus Christ in Babylon, we're all in Babylon, by the way. We play both sides of these coins. And when we wake up to that spirit of Jesus Christ, when that truth hits our heart, uh, there's no going back. This truth hits our eyes and we still got a ways to go. That means we have a carnal understanding. But when that truth hits our hearts, there ain't no going back from that, my friend. Uh, we would have been healed, Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone, into his own county. We're heading for the hills here. And her judgment reacheth unto the heavens and is lifted up even to the skies. Uh, the Lord hath brought forth our, righteous, our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Zion is this, is a, Mount Zion was a place where people would go to receive the word of the Lord. And, uh, and today is when we gather together and reread this mountain. This very book right here is a mountain. Look at it. Can you imagine? I don't know how many words is in this mountain. But every time you read a word, you're taking a step up upward and onward to God's intent for us. Uh, so uh, uh, enough said about that. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes and his device is against Babylon. This word of uh, God's word right here, this is his device. And as Babylon reads this book, our carnal state, our carnal understanding, uh, Babylon to destroy it. Our carnal, under, our carnal understanding uh, will be destroyed of how we understand this book. You know, many people who have read this book front to back has been some of the most horrible men in the history of, uh, of the world. Uh, men that has done horrible atrocities uh, were staunch so-called Christian readers of the Bible. And the atheists always like to throw that in our faces and like to bring that to our attention. But the truth is, uh, God's Word will bear that out because these people had a carnal understanding of the Word of God. And this is what kept them from that spirit of Jesus Christ. Only when we lay down our Babylonian experience can we pick up and run with that spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, to destroy it because... It is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylonian. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. Uh, for the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. Uh, he done it uh, when he wrote this word of God. It's already laid there. It's already within the words of this Bible. O thou that dwellest upon many waters. Think about that old whore that sit up on the backs of those uh, many waters on the backs of that uh, beast system. Uh, many waters has always been a likeness for people. Uh, the many waters. And uh, thou that dwellest upon the many waters. This is a carnal thing. This is why that beast is within those waters and that whore sits on that back. Abundant in treasures, um, 
thine end has come. This is when we stop thinking in the carnal and we start letting our heart do our thinking for us. And the measures of thy covetousness, the Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars. Interesting thing he uses here, caterpillars. And they shall lift up and shout against thee. Uh, the men that is he using like caterpillars, what does a caterpillar do? What is the caterpillar known for? The most famous thing it is known for. It goes to this wonderful metamorphic state and it turns into a butterfly from a caterpillar. And the caterpillar, I've known this early in my spiritual life, I always had a special connection with that caterpillar because this is what happens when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ. First, we end up this old crawly thing on the ground that is meant for lowly uh, inhabitants. And uh, then, after it goes through a sleep, after it goes through a rest, as we rest in Jesus Christ, as Spirit of Jesus Christ, we come out of that, uh, we make this cocoon thing. This is, a, this is a cocoon, this is His protection. And He makes, as we make our protection through these words of God, we make a nice protection cocoon, and we take our rest, then we come out this beautiful caterpillar, and suddenly we have wings, uh, kind of like the uh, people of old would description a, uh, an angel. You would have these wings. What's the purpose of these wings? To rise you above this earth. This is why the old artwork were always depicted with angels with wings. But angels are mostly just messengers. But that's why it's depicted that way. Somehow you, it gives wings gives you the uh, the ability to rise above uh, the earth, which is to say above the carnal. So it's these men that are converting from these caterpillar state, going through this metamorphic stage, is a uh, rising up against uh, uh, oh, uh, Babylon and shouting against thee. Not only fighting, but shouting against thee. I'm shouting right now on this YouTube. Can you hear it? Uh, these uh, I make these videos every day. I think people that uh, people that uh, want to help. Uh, Help the cause of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and want to be a part of this plan. I think we should read the Bible because there's too little Bible being read in the Internet today. Amen. Uh, the Internet is like a new uh, it's like a new world, a new uh, a dimension. And uh, this dimension needs Jesus Christ just like any other dimension needs Jesus Christ. Amen. So the more people reading the word of God in uh, the world of YouTube, the better off we're all going to be. And uh, shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his power. <clears throat> he hath established the word <clears throat> by his wisdom. He hath stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Uh, this this uh, he here we're talking about God. And when we let God uh, speak through us and, work, and we let our hands be God's hands, the world is a far better place. If you've ever seen the world without mercy, you're ever going into a big city and seen the dope heads you know, taking dope in broad daylight and the cops don't even arrest them, even to give them jail or help, neither one. It's like this is what happens when, uh, when we don't let the Lord work through our, our, His hands be our hands and His eyes be our eyes. When that flow stops uh, from uh, God to man, uh, this world becomes a very Babylonian, very sad state. And uh, you don't have to watch the news very long to see that is bearing out right now today. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. And he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain and bring forth the wind out of his treasures. God's treasures is the souls, the beautiful souls that he created. When those souls turn to him and when those souls look to the Father and become a loved, uh, well taken care of soul, this is the treasures for God. Remember that ladder, Jacob's ladder, going up and down that ladder, uh, these souls are. Uh, every man is brutish by his knowledge. Uh, every man is a... a is a uh, is the carnal knowledge is a is a carnal thing and knowledge is a thing of the brain uh, love is not a thing of the brain love is a thing of the heart so when we just look at and read this bible with our brain our, we get knowledge of the bible 
but it does uh, poorly for our love. As I was talking about earlier, people can read the Bible and know it front to back, and they can still be jerks. Uh, this is a uh, knowledge is not our answer here. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. There's that uh, what I was just talking about. That graven image is our carnal understanding. For his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. How we understand even the words of this Bible. With our brain, there's no breath in that. But when we receive these words with our heart, then there's the breath of life. Amen. Uh, they are vanity. The work of error. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. It's not going to fare too well for our carnal understanding. Why? That's of our brain. What happens to our brain when we die? It ends up in a pine box with the rest of our bodies. And that all the data saved on that brain is lost. But all the data that is served up from the, from the flesh brain in prayer to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father in heaven, when all that data is stored within his soul, within his spirit. I'm, I'm using computer terms so we can understand in terms today, uh, in the way we can get like a little model where we can understand how this works. What we know about God in our brain is going to perish. Uh, this Bible says that uh, uh, his, uh, the flesh, uh, the world is going to perish, pass away, and the heavens will pass away. But his word will never pass away. So we have to kind of, still using terms of computers, we have to upload uh, our hearts and our love uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ, something that will not perish, this word. Amen. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. And when you seek God, you separate yourselves out of the brain way of thinking, the carnal things. Remember Jacob's brother Esau? Remember how he was red-headed -head, and he traded his inheritance? which means uh, his future for a bowl of red uh, porridge. Red is the color of corneality. And every time we read red, we need to know that uh, this is speaking of a carnal thing, that red sea that had to be divided. We have to defy that red sea to be delivered from our captivity into our promised land. Uh, it goes on and on, that the whole red cord throughout the whole Bible. And inheritance to the Lord the host in his name. Thou art my battle axe. This is people that uh, a battle axe is something that uh, uh, you use uh, uh, as a weapon. And this is God's battle axe. This is people that has come to the spirit revelation of Jesus Christ. These are people that are willing to speak the truth. We have to ask ourselves, are we willing to speak the truth? Are we willing to stand for the Lord's word? Uh, and battle axe and weapons of war for with thee will I break in pieces the nations and with thee I will destroy the kingdoms what kingdoms those carnal kingdoms amen and with thee will I break in pieces the horses and its rider and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider uh, these horses and chariots, these can be churches today. These can be your, uh, your groups, uh, your whatever that carries you somewhere. And spiritually, what carries you may be, uh, it may be a certain, maybe a YouTube channel, uh, maybe a, uh, maybe a church, maybe a place where you work. This is what carries you. Without these chariots and horses, this is what this spiritually means to us. Without these vehicles that we take on throughout our lives, we don't get very far. And uh, so the chariot that we want to be in is God's chariot. And this is the word. We're reading God's chariot right now. Amen. This, this word takes us far and wide. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. And with thee will I also break in pieces the old and the young. Talking about the people with uh, the spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ because we're helping others come to that spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ. You're going to break your relationships. You're going to break the way you think. Everything will be changed and everything will be converted. But don't worry, that's a good thing. This is where you lose your depression. This is where you lose your suicidal thoughts. This is where you lose 
the, uh, the darkness of this world. Uh, God is going to break this away from people. And uh, it's coming. Hang on. Help's coming. And with thee, I will break in pieces the young man and the maid. This is the beginning of relationships as well as the end of relationships. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. What shepherd? What flock? The shepherd is our old concept of what we used to think what Jesus was. When we start to come around to that spiritual revelation and we start to understand that Jesus is God. He was God from the beginning. He is God in the middle. He is God in the end. That spirit of God was in the flesh body of Jesus. Remember that cup that God used in his hand uh, to bring all this to be? And Jesus talks about a cup quite often, doesn't he? Think about the things he says. Uh, and uh, the shepherd is also uh, <clears throat> the uh, flesh understanding, the flesh teachers that teach us uh, uh, carnal uh, lessons about the word of God. Uh, this is all going to be smashed away and we're all going to receive this spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. And thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. <clears throat> this has to do with plowing. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're plowing right now. Uh, plowing is when you take a farrow or a row and you turn over that ground. And when you turn that ground over, that earth over, you can see what you're looking at when that plow hits it. Well, now you turn that dirt over when we plow. And now we're seeing a new light. <clears throat> we're seeing a new dirt. We're seeing it in a new way. And this is why plow is so often used uh, as a model for uh, seeking God's word. Uh, go plow, an old precious teacher of mine used to tell me all the time. And we just look up in the sky and see a pea in the clouds and we think it means go preach when in fact it means go plow. And this means learn your trade, learn your your understanding. Don't just start preaching things. And this he was talking about, don't preach so much in the carnal. Wait until that spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ comes to you where you can preach to the heart. Amen. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion. Zion, this is where we meet to, to that mountain where we learn the laws and rules and God's will for us. It's gone corrupt. Why? Because it's full of carnal. In your sight, saith the Lord, behold, I am against the old destroying mountain. We build the mountains and the hills. We put those between us and God. And, uh, and this mountain is a mountain of carnality, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth. The whole earth is eat up with carnalism. And I will search out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks, and I will make thee a burnt mountain. God is a consuming fire. When that spirit, the good Lord says he wants us not only to be baptized like in water, like how John did it, he wants us to be baptized by fire. He wants us to be baptized by spirit. And that spirit of the Lord is a consuming fire, and it will consume away all of our carnalness, just like our bodies rot away in the dirt. That never, was never meant to last. But the spirit, that's meant to last. And he's going to burn away that carnal kingship that we have over ourselves, that thing that stands in that temple that ought not claiming to be God, that's ourselves. That's our, where's your temples? Why do you have temples on each side of your head? This is your mind. We think of God in our mind. We need to think of God in our hearts. Because that thing that stands there that ought not is claiming to be God. And it's a lie. He ought not. That's an abomination. Our God is the spirit. Amen. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner nor for a stone for a foundation. Think of who that cornerstone is, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Why can't we take that stone? Because we're still thinking in the carnal. But thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord, as ever, as long as you want to stay in the carnal, is how long you're going to be desolate. Well, don't worry, that cross paid for that price for us to become in the spirit. All we got to do is open our hearts, close our heads and open our hearts. That's what we got to do. Set ye up, a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. I'm blowing the trumpet now. Can you hear it? I think everybody who loves reading the word of the Lord should be blowing their trumpet. 
You should be on that YouTube channel. You should be reading. You should even if you're going to work and you're riding in a work truck with somebody and uh, your work buddy says something. And all he wants to do is talk earthly crap and negative things and derogatory things. You need to blow your trumpet and you need to start talking about good things. And you need to start sharing with him what makes you happy and what makes you whole and what saves you. Uh, this is how we blow that trumpet. Prepare. <clears throat> The nations against her. This is what I'm talking about, against uh, uh, Babylon. We've got to prepare against her. People can't come to the Lord Jesus Christ if they don't know about him. And just tell somebody, yeah, you got to read the mountain. you got to get up on all these pages. And my guy's got to get up and go to work. And guy's got to do this and do this. Uh, they're never going to get around to reading that if they don't have a reason to. They have to see that this word of God, this mountain you're climbing, makes you better it takes away your um, your depression it takes away your hopelessness it takes away all the things that bring us down in this earth when people see that we have to lead by example as a christian when people see us being happy they'll want to be happy too and this is how we get people involved in reading the word of god amen <clears throat> and against her the kingdoms of Ararat, minai and answers as <clears throat> Appoint the captains against her. Cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. <clears throat> Man. As the rough caterpillars. There's those caterpillars again. <clears throat> as the rough caterpillars. Think about that metamorphosis state that we go through when we read this Word of God. Think about the, when we take our wings and become butterflies. This is when we start talking good things and we leave the bad things on the wayside. Amen. Prepare against her the nation with the kings of the Medes and the captains thereof and all the rulers thereof. Come all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow for every purpose of the Lord shall be <clears throat> performed against Babylon. Every purpose of the Lord, every word of God here is meant to go against our carnal natures. And when we take in this word in the spirit, you become an arrow. You become a weapon of war against that carnal state of being. Uh, not a physical weapon, but a spiritual weapon. Amen. Sometimes just an act of kindness can turn somebody who's possessed with foul spirits away from you. Or just by the way you talk and act, if they are <clears throat> possessed by foul demonic spirits, they'll get away from you. They don't want those arrows to sink into them. To make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitation. This is God's end uh, plan. The end of God's plan is that none should perish, but that all should come to righteousness. That's his will. That's his desire. If God can't have his will and desire, who can? The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. <clears throat> when that spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ hits you, your hands will drop down just like King Nebuchadnezzar did uh, when he sees this uh, coming against him. You just, uh, you just go limp. The power of revelation of Jesus Christ is a powerful thing. They have uh, remained in their holds. Their might hath failed. They become as women. Why do we keep saying bringing up this women? Uh, the last two or three times it's brought up as women that in their pangs. This is uh, birth pains. <clears throat> Why? There's a new thing being born in these women that are going through these birth pains. They have burned her dwelling place. Her bars are broken. There's that consuming fire. Her bars are broken. This is the band of carnality. The bars that hold us to it. They're broken. One post shall run to meet another and one messenger to meet another to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end. Your cities will be falling down. This is your everything you're about, your whole, your, uh, your system that is held in place by carnality. It's being taken. Uh, the, the Spirit of the Lord will win over. And that the, passenger, the passages are stopped. 
and the reeds uh, have burned with fire. There's a consuming fire, and the men of war are affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. <clears throat> yet the little while, <clears throat> yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Uh, the whole purpose of this Babylonian state we're born into is to separate the good from the bad. The threshing floor is to separate the chaff from the wheat. And this is what we're here for to experience in this human condition. This is the purpose of it. This is why we find ourselves here. God's trying to give us salvation from a time before. Uh, why? Because God loves us. Amen. Thank God for that. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me. He hath crushed me. Me hath, He hath crushed me. He hath made me an empty vessel. Think about our bodies, our flesh bodies, and as, 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 as a vessel. We can take on the Spirit of the Lord in that vessel, and we become a, a nice, happy thing. If we take on the Spirit of Nebuchadnezzar, the Spirit of carnalism, we become void. And our vessels is empty because all we have is a, is a carnalist in there. But it's fixing to turn. Watch what happens here. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. There's that dragon. Who's the dragons? We're all the dragons when we're in that carnal state. He has swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled my belly with my uh, delegates. He may he hath cast me out. The violence done to me, me and my flesh be upon Babylon. Uh, yes, our flesh bodies are often consumed by Babylon, by carnalism. Uh, shall the inhabitant of Zion say, And my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea. Uh, shall Jerusalem say uh, it's a it's a losing battle for the flesh but don't worry as long as we got uh, blood in our flesh as long as we got our hearts pumping uh, we've got a chance to make this decision decision to open and receive uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ amen therefore thus saith the Lord behold I will plead thy cause and take vengeance he did that on the cross for thee and I will dry up her sea. What sea is that? Those seas of many waters. All this confusion. All these multiple waters. We're going to trade that in for one water. Amen. And make her springs dry. Her old springs are going to dry up. All the things we, that the carnal understanding has been re, being received from this word of God. They're going to dry up. Because we're fixing to take on those winged butterflies waters. Amen. And Babylon shall become heaps. And a dwelling place for dragons. And astonishment and hissing without an inhabitant this is the end of god's plan we're talking about here this is going to happen god don't like to lose anything therefore he don't have to god is going to reclaim what he lost in the age before this one my friends this is a rescue mission can you see the life raft will you grab hold of that life raft they shall roar together like lions they shall yell as lions whelps. In their heat, I will make their feast, and I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice and sleep, a perpetual sleep, and not awake, saith the Lord. <clears throat> many won't, sadly, but many will. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter. This is the, uh, when I say many won't, many will, in the flesh, uh, there's, there's no good outcome for the flesh, but there's wonderful outcome for the spirit. These same people that's coming down for lands of the slaughter, uh, God has place for them. God has chance for them. God has love for them. Like rams with he goats. How is uh, Shekak, uh, Sheka uh, taken? And how is uh, the praise of the whole earth surprised? How is Babylon come as astonishment among the nations? The sea is come up upon Babylon. She is covered with a multitude of waters. Multitudes of waters. Not the waters of Jesus Christ could give us at that well. Remember that well when he was asking that Samaritan woman uh, for a drink? He told her he can give her the water she'd never have need of or thirst again. This is the waters we're after. 
these old multiple waters of confusion. It's like the thousands of churches that we have. <clears throat> these waters are going to dry up. The sea has come up around Babylon. This is why we're, all of our churches are all confused today. Uh, she is covered with a multitude of waters thereof. Her cities are a desolation and a dry land, and the wildernesses and the land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doeth any son of man pass thereby. Son of man is people that's come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I will punish Baal and Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up, and, a, and the nations shall not flow together any more unto him, yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. This, he's taken back what Babylon has taken. All of us you know, people that are consumed in the carnal state with carnal understanding, uh, God's going to make Babylon throw that up. He's going to puke that up, and uh, that's going to be uh, saved from Babylon. We're coming out. My people, go ye out of the midst of her. <clears throat> How plain can that be? It's my people that's in Babylon. My people, go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. All we got to do is let that spirit of revelation of Jesus Christ take hold in our hearts. Ask God for the truth and truth will come. And least your heart faint, and lest your heart faint, and yea, fear for the rumor that shall be heard of the land, a rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land and ruler against ruler. It's this perpetual endless state of carnality. Come out of that. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heavens and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon as it is in heaven, so it will be in the earth. Uh, for the spoilers shall come unto her from the north. There's that north again, saith the Lord. The spoilers always seem to come from the north, God's cup. As Babylon hath caused the slain of Israel to fail, so at Babylon shall fall slain unto all the earth. There's no good outcome for the carnal. Yea, that have escaped the sword, go away. Stand not still. Don't stand still. Now remember the Lord afar off. And let Jerusalem come into your mind. Let Jerusalem come into your mind. This is when we receive that spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ. This is how we escape. Don't stand still. You better run to that spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame has covered our faces. This is our carnalness. Shame has covered our faces, for strangers are come into the sanctuaries of the Lord's house. This is that carnal thing that stands in that sanctuary that claims to be God that ought not, that abomination. This is self, ego, mego, ego. We need to let the spirit of the revelation come into our hearts of Jesus Christ. Amen. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will do judgment upon her graven Im images, and though all of the land... Uh, the wounded uh, shall groan. Who's wounded here? This is our carnal states. We're going to groan. We're going to say, oh my God, I got to read this whole Bible again because I never really knew what it meant. We're going to have to, now we got to understand this whole thing in the spirit. But guess what? It's a pleasure. It's a wonderful thing. Let it happen. Though Babylonian should mount up <clears throat> to heaven and though she should Fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. A sound of a cry cometh from Babylon. You better cry out unto the Lord, Babylon, and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans, because the Lord has spoiled Babylon and destroyed out of her a great voice. 
destroyed out of her the great voice. When her waves do roar like a great waters, a noise of their voice is uttered. Because the spoiler has come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken, every one of their bows is broken. Uh, a, a lot of ways that people used to preach when they were in the carnal, those bows are going to be broken. You're going to preach them in a new way. For the Lord God of recompense shall surely require it. And I will make drunk her princesses and uh, her wise men and captains and her rulers and her mighty men. And they shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not awake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Uh, the carnal is uh, never going to be awakened into the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is why it's so important for us to come to that revelation of Jesus Christ in the Spirit. And let these words be written on our heart, not just our brain. Amen. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, The board, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken, and her high gates shall be burned with fire. There's God that consuming fire. Let those walls burn down. We've got a better thing coming. And the people shall labor in vain, and the folk in the fire... And they shall be weary. As long as we stay in that carnal vein, it's going to be all for naught. This is why we need to make that hyperspace, that hyperspeed jump to what I call Jesus 2.0. This is the spiritual understanding of Jesus Christ. This is that revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. The word with Jeremiah the prophet commanded, uh, Syri, uh, the son of Nemri, uh, the son of Messiah, uh, which he went with uh, Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and to Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. And uh, Sarai was a quiet uh, prince. So Jeremiah wrote in the book all the evil that should come to Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said unto Sarai, When thou camest to Babylon, and shalt see, and shalt read all these words. We're reading these words right now. Then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place, and cut it off. Talking about our, our uh, carnal understanding. That none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be the desolate forever. Uh, this is uh, basically people saying, come out of this carnal way of thinking. So you can get to the spirit and it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book. When you read this book and when you've gained in the understanding of this, what this means spiritually, listen to the instructions that thou shalt bind a stone to it. Who's that stone? That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is often referred to as the rock, the stone and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates. Here's those many troubled waters. Uh, as just as I'm casting this thing right now into the waters of the world through this little YouTube, everything we do is a little likenesses for the big thing. And if we all imitate and if we all do what the instructions say, uh, big things will come out of it. These seeds will grow. And just like the, this, as I'm reading this book and casting it into the Euphrates, this uh, this uh, this thing that carries us from one place to another, which is what our internet is today, it's a Euphrates all of its own. And thou shalt say. Thus shall Babylon sink and shall not rise uh, from the evil that I will bring upon her and that it shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Think about it. By helping people understand the, carnal, the uh, spiritual meanings of uh, the, uh, the word of God, uh, everybody that receives that and can hear that will never hear those words again in a carnal state once you've heard them in the spirit i know it's a silly thing to use as a likeness but the ztr is the best one i can think of for years and years i've cut with an old four-wheel tractor a regular ride lawnmower and when i bought my first ztr i said man this is a whole new world i will never go back to a four-wheel tractor and cut grass that old slow way when i can cut grass with a ztr man that thing zips around so fast it cuts your grass cutting time in half well, it's a poor likeness, but the Word of God, understanding it from the spiritual 
uh, from the carnal does the same thing. Once you understand something in the spiritual, you'll never have need to go back and teach it or preach it or understand it or share it in the carnal sense again because it is that much more efficient. It is that much better. It is that much more holy light than what we can get in our, our poor, weak, carnal understanding. So uh, tie it to that stone and throw it out there into that river. Let that stone sink that carnal way of understanding. Take it to the bottom, never to rise again, so that we can have spiritual understanding. What a wonderful and powerful thing. I think we got, I want to say, it looks like one more chapter. Uh, yep, looks like one more chapter, and then we'll probably be in the book of limitations. Unless the Lord puts it on my heart to do another book, I don't know. I, I long for the New Testament, and I'm sure many of you that study do, but so far I've been able to see Jesus Christ in these Old Testaments uh, pretty good. Uh, me and the wife, we read New Testament at night uh, before we go to sleep, and I suggest everybody end your day with the Word of God and then close your day out the same way. Uh, pay respects to God and let Him know that you love Him and that you care. And that's when the blessings will start coming to us. Grandchildren, if you're following along, I hope you guys are in a good relationship with your Bible. Uh, this is a messenger. I always like to tell the little story about how Jacob rested that, that uh, angel. And the word angel uh, translates to messenger. There's no greater angel you're ever going to see on this earth than this holy Bible right here. It is the messenger of God. Jesus Christ paid the price on that cross, but you can't know about Jesus Christ if you don't get this messenger. If you don't learn and know the story of Jesus Christ and uh, study to where you can understand that, you can't understand Jesus' name. Our name is our story. And if we don't understand that names are stories, without that story, we can't ever really know the true name of Jesus Christ, can we? So by reading this name of Jesus Christ, uh, so many people think that all you got to do, you can leave a horrible, terrible life, and all you got to do is plead the blood of the cross on your deathbed. Uh, you could have been a Hitler, and uh, everything's going to come up peachy keen because you know the name of Jesus, and you claim in that name of Jesus, and everything's going to be all right. Uh-uh, not so simple. Not so simple. God wants you to know the name of Jesus Christ, and the name of Jesus Christ is that story of Jesus Jesus says, Lo, I come to you in the volume of the book. And as we read this, this is where our metamorphosis change uh, takes place. This is where we come from an old uh, crawly, uh, uh, what do you call that thing, uh, uh, caterpillar. And this is where you get to be a beautiful butterfly uh, from reading the Word of God. So uh, read a little bit of that. You, life is a long thing, hopefully, if God blesses you with a long life. So uh, most of us can, don't have to read that much in a day to, uh, to get to know the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, we can also, uh, with our mouths, talk uh, these words to our friends and things. And, and through this, uh, people's understanding of that uh, name of Jesus Christ gets bigger and bigger as we go. Until someday it gets big enough, we can receive that revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I hope you guys are still studying along, and if you, man, this is a long video. If you made it to the end of this one, I gotta hand it to you. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a long one. I probably should chop up some of these longer chapters in the two, but uh, so I just feel compelled, man, to do a, to do a, a chapter a day as long as I can. I think I'll continue doing that as long as the good Lord is, uh, is uh, helping me out uh, with understanding these scriptures, and uh, and able to share them with you. Uh, it's an honor to do that. I love you. God loves you. Don't ever forget that. This is why uh, we read these uh, books to you. And uh, look us up. We're in the book. I hope everybody has a great day. And if you read a little bit and study in the Word of the Lord, getting to know that name of Jesus Christ, every day is going to be a great day, no matter what your troubles, no matter what uh, you may be going through. Every day is a great day if we read a little bit of the Word of the Lord. Amen. And I'll, hopefully I'll see you on the next reading. Amen.